بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه تقبل الله الطاعة uh, Something we did mention many times but I think we need to keep mentioning especially for the youth and for the kids to fix some kind of possible misconception Many of us we do face big questions when something that we hate happened to us we dislike, we don't like, we feel upset. Something we classify as evil, bad, we don't like it. So we keep asking questions. Why Allah is allowing such and such? Why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not protecting me? Why Allah has permitted this to happen? Now to understand this, let's have an idea about a road map, how to understand under three main categories, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala explained to us in a very beautiful way, in Surah Al-Kahf. The story that you know. You all know the story. Now the new thing that could be is the new classification. Tasneef Jadid. Now we know that the story of Musa alayhi salam with Al-Khadr, the three big stories you know. When he made a hole in the ship, then when he caused the loss of the life of a young man, and when he fixed the wall with a stingy, bad, you know, wicked people and they do not deserve it, let he did it. So Lot, now we will give three new classification. By understanding them, you can make analogy, qiyas. You can measure this and you can answer questions about your life in light of these three stories. But number one, the introduction. No one will be able to understand the qadr of Allah, the will of Allah, and how Allah controls the universe through His will and His laws if we do not submit and accept and have full faith in His attributes. On top of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is alim, basir, hakim, qadir. We need those. <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala all-knowing, all-hearing, all-capable, Always, if these four big attributes with the fact that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is subhanahu wa ta'ala does not die and he it's impossible Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that he might forget or becomes weak when we bring all of these meanings to our mind we understand now the following look to first category and how we can benefit in our life first category Musa alayhi salam with al-Khadr. Both of them, they are prophets. Both of them, they receive revelation. Now, he made a defect in the ship. The reply, this is a big wrong. Why you have done this thing? We discovered later that a dictator king, he was about to seize the ship. Because of the defect points in the ship, it was not taken. Category number one, we see things that we hate, it's not out of our control, we did not cause it, it happened beyond our wish, but however it happened. So the hole was made in the ship. So the bad thing has already happened against their will, even though they are poor, nice, good people. Now, few minutes, hours later, they discovered that the hole that was dug by someone else was the main reason for their protection from the dictator king. So category number one, some what we classify bad things or something we hate, if they happen beyond our control, it has nothing to do with the punishment. It's something, but we don't like it. Why Allah just submit to the will of Allah and say, Alhamdulillah, you will witness the khair very soon. This is the first category. You see what you hate, then you discover the wisdom of Allah, then you submit and say, Alhamdulillah. This is the first category. Second category. Now, Al-Khadr was behind the loss of a life of a young man. nukra. This is a horrible. How come? You cause the death of an innocent person. He was about to make their the life if he stayed alive, you don't know, I don't know, we don't know. Allah knew that this young man, if he continued his life, he will make the life of his parents miserable. 
his mission was just to live to that moment and that's it now the test is for his parents they lost their kids their reaction was they were salihin alhamdulillah they were replaced with another one aqraba zakata wa aqraba khayran minhu zakata wa aqraba ruhma much more better and they live now the, the interesting thing in the story maybe the mother and the father after they lost the killed son they had no idea who caused his death and maybe they kept making dua for him having no idea why he passed away at all and they're making dua up to the day of judgment they were replaced be with another one and they had no idea but what if my son passed away because of a virus car accident earthquake volcano <laughs> whatever he just passed away submit alhamdulillah okay so this is second category sometimes many things happen against our will we have nothing today but just to submit to the will of Allah let's come to the third category which is the most applicable on all of us and this is the glad tidings third category the most important one now two young kids sleeping at home their father in his grave passed away Allah knows when the father is dead the young kids are sleeping Allah sent two prophets to work in construction to fix and protect the treasure of them that they will discover later maybe 20 or 30 40 years later they did not know the father had no idea we did not know no one in you even Muhammad وسلم, unless Allah told him through the Quran no one on earth was aware of this except Allah and the true prophets who were commanded to do this and the real actual accident happened maybe 30 years later no one was aware of what was happening who on earth was aware that when they were digging okay they were digging oh treasure we found alhamdulillah treasure they had no idea that 30 years ago two prophets they were protecting this for their sake <laughs> under the full control of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when you think about this you have to have full faith that while now I sleep, you sleep, Allah does not sleep. I forget, you forget, Allah does not forget. Allah does not become tired. Nothing will be lost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Aleem, Basir, Qadir, Jabba, everything. So just, just trust in Allah. Put your head on the pillow. Do your duties and the rest is not yours. <laughs> Allah is the one who's taking care of the universe. <laughs> the thing which is yours and mine is, even by the way, even the rizq. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, نَحْنَ رَزُقُهُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ نَحْنَ رَزُقُكُمْ وَإِيَّاهُمْ You have just to do the efforts, but not necessarily they will take the rizq as you wish. That's why we see, for example, some people, they are holding PhD in the highest level of technological, you know, certificates and degrees. Yet, hardly they are able to pay their bills. And you see someone, he did not graduate even from the school, a multimillionaire. Mathematically, how can you explain this? Logically, <laughs> you can't explain it. You have a lot of multimillionaires, they don't have a degrees. They did not go to the universities. They don't even able to make public speech. Yet, they are multi-billionaires. And very intelligent people, hardly able to eat. <laughs> so, subhanallah, we need just to do the efforts. After the effort according to the law of Allah, then go and have the peace of mind. Because Allah is taking care of everything. Allah is the controller of everything. Allah is the one who maintains and controls and preserves everything. Just trust in Allah, believe in Allah, thank Allah. فلنحمد الله سبحانه وتعالى على عمد الإسلام أقول قولي هذا واستغفر الله ولي ولكم فيا فوز المستغفر السلام عليكم